Okay, before we get started on our next project, which will be a drawstring backpack, I thought some of you probably didn't have the experience of going to a fabric store. This might be one of those videos that people are tempted to skip, but I would highly encourage you not to do that. This is important stuff that you'll be wanting to listen to, and I hope to make it not too boring. I don't know how a fabric store could be boring. That's not my world. So, you know, stay tuned. This is crucial content you're gonna wanna watch. I am so excited, because today we're going to the fabric store, my favorite bad store. <gasps> Hold up. Before we head into the great wild unknown of the fabric store, let me tell you what we're gonna be doing in there today. The difficulty level of a project is not only determined by what you're doing, but also the material you're using to do it with. In other words, your fabric choice is gonna have a lot to do with your ability to sew the project. That's why the big fashion houses can charge what they do for their beautiful creations, because number one, they're using the most quality, best possible materials, and those are expensive. And number two, because a lot of the fabrics they're choosing require a great deal of expertise to sew well. This is also the reason a lot of things look so cheap. If you get a cheap article, chances are really good, it's because they started with cheap materials. One of the quickest ways to bring your level up is by buying quality fabrics. So if you want a good result from your sewing, and if you're gonna spend the time to sew, I would assume that you did, you really need to start with good fabrics. But not just that, you need to have the knowledge of how to sew on that fabric, and I would never send you off to start a project on fabric that you didn't have the expertise to sew on. That being said, all of these fabrics I'm gonna show you in this video are possible to sew on. And with a little bit of skill, you will be. I don't want you to have to worry about sewing on a slidey, stretchy, lofty, sticky fabric when I just want you to be able to sew straight. There are about five reasons material can be difficult to sew on. Number one is bulk. Number two is sticky. Number three is stretchy. Number four is slidey. And the last is loft. And if your fabric has any one of these five elements going on, or even more than one, then you're automatically asking more from yourself as a sewist just to sit down to that material. And sometimes the results can be disastrous. <laughs> As a beginning sewist, I have a few suggestions about the materials that you're gonna use until you've really mastered sewing straight, going around corners, going around curves, and being able to just manage the fabric that's going underneath your machine. For a beginning sewist, I'm gonna recommend that you stick in the cotton zone. Quilting cottons are really so great for a beginning sewer. They are guaranteed accuracy. You can push that stuff through your machine with a lot of precision. Another couple good ones to consider would be top weights and bottom weights. Top weights are things like shirtings, and you'll be able to tell, just make sure you don't choose anything with a stretch. Knits are a little much for a beginning sewist. Also, the bottom weights are things like twill, or stretch sateens, or denim. Denim and other bottom weights can be bulky, but by substituting your needle with a denim needle, you should be fine with a bottom weight. Flannel and polar fleece are also really good choices for a beginner. The only thing I would say is around the top of a gathered drawstring, it can get rather bulky when you use a bulky fabric. So that would be my only consideration there. Otherwise, let's get back to the store and check out all the amazing, beautiful fabrics there are to sew on. I can't wait to show you, but please have good thoughts for me today that I will not spend all of my money in that bad store. I mean, that bad good store. Like, it's a good store, but seriously, ah, oh, I When I see a beautiful piece of fabric, it's so hard. I just want it. We are going into my favorite place in the whole world, the fabric store. I can't really tell, but I'm dancing. Technically, I actually do have a lot of other favorite places, like the concert hall. That's a favorite place, and also good restaurants. That's another really favorite place, but I'm gonna show you this favorite place right now. Sorry, this visit has to be so rushed. I won't even be able to cover half the fabric options, but I will try to hit the high points. Unknown to the many patrons who frequent the fabric store are reads. 
and their potential for use as headwear. First, let's talk about all the great fabric options for a beginning sewist. Again, this is not a complete list, but at least it gives you a good place to start. So these fabrics behind me are called top weights, and this fabric specifically is a shirting. And I mean, it's because you make a shirt out of it. I know, shocking. <laughs> and that's why you know it's a top weight because it's something that we make our tops out of. Um, the hand of a shirting, so when we're talking about hand of a fabric, we're talking about its movement, its shape, the way it feels in your hand. The hand of a shirting is a little more solid, a little more structure than a quilting cotton, for instance. Um, it's good for projects like shirts. Anyway, this particular one, I think I may use in the next project because I want you guys to be sewing something that is not too difficult to put together, but has a little more substance to it, but I don't want it to be so thick and so difficult to get through that, you know, it really makes it a nightmare to sew. Now we've reached what I would refer to as bottom weights. And these fabrics are what you would sew bottoms out of. I know, it's really complex. So I think I might use this one for the next project. It's really perfect because it's a drawstring bag. If you use something that's really heavy duty um, for a drawstring bag, when you get around the casing, the drawstring won't pull because it's got too much bulk. But if you can find something that has a little bit of structure, um, that's really kind of perfect. Now we're coming to a fabric I love that I can't wait to tell you about is twill. Twill is a wonderful fabric. Chinos are made out of this. There's all kinds of things. It's a bottom weight, so it's a little heavier. And I love the buttery soft smoothness of this fabric. So it's a little more structured, a little heavier. So it's perfect for projects you're about to make like a drawstring backpack, but it's not so bulky. It's like a denim. So I don't think this is generally looked well upon. This particular fabric is 70% off and I do want to see how it drapes. So I'm gonna try it on. Oh, stop the video. We have come to the linen section. I have to talk to you about the magnificence that is linen. You can sew pajama bottoms and pants and shirts and tablecloths and table linens. And I mean, you could sew a tent out of linen. Linen is the best fabric. It's both formal and casual. You can sew curtains out of linen. Linen is amazing fabric. It's so easy to sew on. It's great for bags. You could sew just anything out of linen. It is one of my favorite fabrics. It is a marvel. Also among the bottom weight category are these stretch sateens, and those are also so great to sew on, and you'll always get a really great result out of these bottom weight stretch sateens. Totally recommended for even a beginning sewist. Okay, these behind me right now are all the quilting cottons. And there will just always be like this huge row of quilting cottons in all kinds of colors. And this is, you know, where you find most of the quilters. I personally do not quilt because I know that it becomes extremely addictive and I have enough addictions to take care of already in my sewing universe. But I think it's really beautiful. I use cotton fabrics a lot. These are the easiest to sew on and you're gonna get your best and most accurate edges because quilting cottons are very friendly to a sewing machine. Now, just because I call them quilting cottons doesn't mean you only use them for quilting. I use quilting cottons like constantly and um, they're really fantastic to sew on and you just need to make sure that it matches the project that you want. Sometimes um, if you want to give it a little structure or stability you need to add an interfacing but otherwise you know these are great. If you're a beginner, this should be your wheelhouse. Most of what you sew should be cotton prints and solids. There's all these novelty prints. Aren't those cute? Like I'm just feeling the love right now. So much love. Mm. Valentine's Day. I'm thinking of all the cool things I'm gonna sew for my friends for Valentine's Day. 
Oh, maybe I'll get behind and I'll have to put it off until St. Patrick's, which is a great holiday. It's green. A beginner should probably stay away from stripes or plaids just because when you're sewing a stripe or a plaid, you have to match it and that can get really complex. Like you don't want to be sewing along and end up with your seam that looks like this. No good. Also at the fabric store, they have yarn so you can practice wig. I always wanted to be Lucille Ball. It's a good activity. Now I know this red is a little much Raggedy Ann. I'm also going to talk to you about these cool fabrics, which are kind of a top weight. It's like those cot quilting cottons, but it has a lot more structure. Anyway, this is fantastic stuff too. I think this would be perfect for a next project. The perfect thing. I am told that one of the things you can ask for when you're looking for that great cotton fabric that has a little more structure to it is premium cotton. Let's talk about flannel. So this is where I'm usually spending most of my life around Christmas time sewing a bunch of matching pajama bottoms for my family. But flannel is fantastic to sew on. The layers tend to have like a little bit of a stickiness to each other. Sometimes it can also cause a little bit of struggle, but basically this is a beginning sewer project. I wouldn't worry at all about sewing on flannel. Flannel is a great fabric for so many things. There is so much flannel at the store, like rows and rows and rows and rows and rows and more rows and some more rows of flannel. 95% of this store is flannel. People must be very cold here. Seriously, it's like never-ending flannel. Flannel, 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 flannel. Guess what? It's more flannel. Flannel, 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 flannel. You get a flannel and you get a flannel and you get a flannel and you get a flannel. Now we need to talk about some of the fabrics that you should sort of steer clear of until you have a little more experience sewing. I came up with a list of the reasons these are difficult and called it the five fears of fabric. Actually, there's probably more, but I just felt like five fears of fabric was so catchy and YouTube-y that I really had to go with it. First fabric struggle is stretch. And I actually find this one to be one of the most difficult for me personally. coming to the knits and knits are considered a top weight because you see a lot of tops that are made out of knit. Knit is like a t-shirt fabric. It's stretchy. It pulls. I don't know if I can show you a little bit. There you are. Um, it's a little different than a swimsuit lycra, which is really stretchy and those are very challenging to sew on. I would think that a swimming suit would be a very advanced project, um, difficult to sew on. You do need to remember what you're sewing though, because like for instance, a knit might not be the first choice for a purse unless you want a stretchy kind of purse. <laughs> not all knits are equal. This one. That is super stretchy, take a look. Like super, super stretchy. And you have to know that anytime you pick a stretchier fabric, it's going to produce a little more challenge for you as you're sewing. So um, I would definitely use a knit needle on something like this. And um, there are other challenges associated with sewing something stretchy. We probably need to talk about this kind of fabric. It's super popular right now. There's all kinds of colors and stuff, but this cotton, well, there's some stretch to it. And um, if you're trying to do a hem, good luck to you. It's really cute, super popular, very hard to sew on. I pity the person who's trying to do a rolled hem edge on this. Now we're going to talk about slippery fabrics, and I actually find these easier to manage than stretchy fabrics, except that some of them are stretchy and slippery, so I don't know what you want to say about that. Okay, now I am to all this pretty, you know, prom dress, formal sort of fabrics. There's tons of different options of these, but we need to talk about them one by one. 
an example of a satin. And satins are wonderful, some that have a little more structure and stability and others that are a lot more flowy. Um, satins are difficult to sew on for two reasons. Number one, because they are slippery and slidey. And number two, because you need a good needle to sew through this stuff, otherwise it tends to snag or sometimes buckle and cause puckers in your sewing. The main thing to remember is that it's a very tight weave, so you need the right needle to sew through this stuff. Oh, this is so delicious. You know, um, I think it's probably a very expensive, I would say like $20, $25 a yard satin right here. Um, my experience is usually if you want something really high quality, you pay the bucks for it. <laughs> get a good fabric sometimes you can get them on sale oh my gosh i wish you could feel this is so delicious if you're using those quality fabrics it's automatically going to make your project so much nicer nicer than anything you could buy because guess what people who are in this business they want to make money and they don't want to spend 25 dollars a yard to make the little satin pillowcase that you want perfect on your bed but you know what i'm greedy I do. I'm going to use my 50% off coupon and I'm going to buy some of this today. This particular store did not carry any real silk. Real silk is expensive and temperamental, but very luxurious. And we need to talk about it. Dupioni is probably the most easily sewable of all silk varieties. It is not slippery, but it frays terribly. You need to make sure that you finish off any raw edge on a silk for sure. It's also better to use a very sharp, fine needle. You'll recognize Dupioni because it has these little lines on it that you'll notice those are slubs and that is a characteristic of Dupioni silk. If you haven't had a lot of experience sewing but you still want the luxury of a silk, I would recommend either sewing a Dupioni or a silk taffeta. Silk Charmeuse is likely the most slippery fabric I have ever worked with. It behaves a lot like satin, but with a little bit heavier drape. This one is actually not real silk. It is a polyester. And this is something that you learn when you look at the end of the bolt. It's important to look at the end of the bolt for the fabric composition and care instructions before you purchase a fabric. Here's cool fabric. This one is a brocade, satin brocade, and I would say the same rules apply for sewing on a satin brocade. It's just kind of cool, right? Now on the opposite side of the spectrum from that brocade that's a little thicker um, is are these like netting tool, tool especially. Okay, so this tool has an embroidery on it. It's a little different than um, just a straight up tool, but let me tell you, those people who are making tutus out of tool are a special breed of sewer. Sewing on tool, you think it'd be so easy, but it is not. Sewing, now a lot of people do that, you know, little cutting and, you know, those little tutus where you just knot it, that's crafting and that is not sewing and that's easy with tool. But sewing on tool, you'd be surprised. It's very slidey, it's very slippery, and you usually have to do a lot of layers of it. So tool can be sort of challenging, um, but not impossible. It's definitely not something I would choose for a beginning project, for sure. Oh yeah, here's the tool. Me and tool, we have a relationship. I mean, I've sewed on it a lot, but every time I get ready for a project where I'm gonna have layers and layers and layers of tool, I get myself ready for that. So we do need to talk about the difference between organza and chiffon. Organza is this. There's usually a sheen to it. It's quite um, stiff. There's a lot of stiffness to it. Where chiffon is super floaty, flowy, 
and there's a difference in sewing on them. This one is gonna be super slidey, a little bit more like satin. So there's a little bit of difficulty in sewing through this. You definitely want the right needle. I would use a very sharp needle to get through this. Same thing here. You want a very fine, small needle to get through something like this. It's very flowy and so you have to be very careful and sew very slowly. Besides being slippery, chiffon, organza, and tulle have an extra difficulty level in that they are lightweight, sheer fabrics and that takes an extra degree of experience to sew well and choosing a pretty good needle too. Let's talk about lace. Now lace, you know, there's all sorts of different ones. This particular one will be very challenging to sew on, as you can tell, because look at how many holes. Can you imagine trying to sew and then all of a sudden there's nothing to sew on because it's just a big hole? Yeah, that's sewing on lace. Uh, some laces are more like the guipair. Is that how you say it? I think it's guipair or guipair. Guipure. Anyway. The really, really expensive, nice, beautiful laces, um, if they've got a lot of holes like that, just keep, keep that in mind. It can be a little challenging. Well, this one to me is a little more on the tool side of the spectrum, but look at all the holes. That's gonna be a little tricky to sew on, not as tricky as the last one. It's a lace that's stretchy. It's quite stretchy. I can't show you really, but it's, it's not quite as stretchy as a knit, but I would treat this one like a knit. When you come across a sticky fabric, you'll know it. Either your machine will start making little squeaky noises or the needle will have a very difficult time going in and out of the fabric. You can learn a lot about a fabric by reading the end of the bolt. In this case, you can see that this fabric is not only sticky, it's also stretchy. There are these fun, shiny, metallic sorts of fabrics. I've sewed on this before. One thing though, is sometimes they've got sort of a plasticky kind of characteristic to them. And so they're a little on the vinyl side of the spectrum. And we'll talk about vinyl in just a second. So fabrics like this, if they're a little bit sticky, you need to keep that in mind um, because sometimes it likes to stick to the presser foot as you're sewing and that causes a lot of problems. Yeah, I would definitely say that this is on the sticky side of the spectrum. It's really cool though. I'm like imagining all sorts of really fun projects out of this thing. I might buy some. This is how I get in trouble at my bad store. You'll find the vinyl on bolts located near the home decorating and upholstery fabrics. Each of these bolts are 54 inches wide of fabric. And while we're talking about the width of fabric, let's take a look at the other types of fabric bolts. Look at all the different heights of these fabrics. That is because each of those fabrics are different widths. The most common widths of fabric are 45 inches wide, 54 inches wide and 60 inches wide. And it's really important to know how wide your fabric is when you're making calculations or deciding how much fabric you're gonna need. Okay, we need to talk about vinyl. Vinyl is the coolest stuff and you can do so many great little projects out of this clear vinyl stuff, but vinyl. <laughs> so there's some that's, you know, really thin and then there's some that's a lot more heavy duty and thick. Obviously, the more heavy duty it is, the harder it is to sew on and the smaller and, you know, less structure, the thinner it is, the easier it is to sew on. The thing about vinyl is it is very sticky and you have to have a little bit of a trick to be able to sew on it. Now, it's not impossible and because I was such a little show off, I will show you how I did sew a drawstring bag out of this stuff, but um, I chose something a little heavy duty because if you choose something that's thin like this, I mean, if you try to put anything in it, it'll just, it's like a Ziploc bag or something. If you choose something thick like this, it doesn't gather well, like for a casing. So I had to kind of do a little trick, but I'll show it to you. Vinyl is definitely a more advanced fabric. I wouldn't choose it right away. Um, there are ways to get around vinyl though that I can show you in upcoming projects. 
Vinyl is possibly the most sticky fabric you'll ever have to deal with. When you sew two layers together, it likes to stick to the presser foot. Now a piece of tape put on the bottom of your presser foot will often make it slide a little easier. But here's another problem with vinyl. When you sew on it, the stitches that you make are forever. It makes little holes in the vinyl and those don't ever come out. If you don't want a whole bunch of random holes looking like pock marks on your project, you get one shot at vinyl. If you look closely, you'll see how I got around the problem of the vinyl not gathering around the top of the bag. That is cotton. So I actually made a cotton casing around the top of the vinyl bag in order to get it to close correctly. So cotton comes to the rescue once again. So I'm sort of adding another category to our five fears, but technically I'm putting this one under the category of loft simply because most obstacles are lofty. Also, here are metal bees at the fabric store. This is not fabric. You can't sew on these. Beaded fabrics are probably the best example of an obstacle. Your needle will break if you try to sew through beads. Sewing on beaded fabric is a painstaking process. Ooh, look at that fabric. It is so cool. But yeah, I mean, look, folds. If you're trying to sew this direction, yeah, no way. You can sew basically one direction on this fabric. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful though. And a fabric like this also, like you gotta make sure that you're sewing correctly on the folds. That would be kind of tricky. My best guess, you would have to pin those folds as you sewed. Sequins are also big obstacles and they can be really sticky for your needle if you try to sew through them. Really the best way to handle sequins is to undo them, remove them from the seam line, and then secure them and sew along the seam line along the edge where you secured them. It's a painstaking process, which is why you'll notice that on many cheap garments, they just sew right through those sequins. It looks terrible, but doing it right is just not worth it for them. Anytime you add sequins to anything, you are upping the difficulty level quite a bit. Now, if you could sew along this edge the entire time, that would be one thing, but usually <laughs> patterns aren't that way. So you'll be sewing through layers. Now there are hacks and tricks to sewing through something like this. So it's not impossible. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, I would definitely not choose this for one of your beginning projects. Now this sequin is a little different because it's not all those little plasticky things that are layered one on top of another. This is much more sewable um, sequin. And I would say that if you wanted something sequin to look for something like this, you'll have a better result. See, here's another one that's really kind of cool, but would not be that difficult to sew on. I like that. Look at this fabric. It is so gorgeous. I, this is where I get in trouble because I see these fabrics and I think, I don't know what I want to sew with this, but I just want the fabric because someday I'm going to make something incredible out of it. It's when you can find a fabric like this and think, this belongs at my house. You've likely not heard of lofty fabric before, but think of it as the big hair of the fabric world. Let's talk about Minky. Minky might give you a little bit of a run for your money as you're sewing on it, um, especially if you've got right sides together. This has sort of a velvety kind of texture and anytime you're sewing on velvet, oh, <laughs> it slips, it moves, um, things don't stay where they're supposed to stay. It can be very challenging. I mean, let's just take a look at this fabric for a second. Those are little bubbles. Can you imagine how those behave underneath your machine? That loft can be a little bit tricky. Depends on, especially if you're going around corners or anything like that. Yeah, Minky's a pain. 
You might also notice, and I mentioned before, Minky has fibers, and those fibers stand up, and they have a little bit of a property that reminds me of velvet. Particular Minkies are probably much easier than a Minky like this one. Oh, get ready for your whole household to have little fur and fuzz all over it that you cannot get rid of. This is the fabric equivalent of glitter, is minky or fur. Oh, let's talk about fur in a minute. This side of the minky spectrum is definitely gonna be a lot more messy for you, but something like this <laughs> is gonna slide all over a little bit, uh, even worse than satin. So there's a slidiness to these. They make incredible stuff and you definitely wanna sew on it someday. Look, this is so cute. <laughs> Can't you just see like a cowboy themed room for a little baby? Oh, so cute, love it. You know, if you're into self-punishment, this is your fabric. Real velvet, yeah, this'll make you cry. So velvet, I don't even wanna get into velvet. If you wanna sew on velvet, there are plenty of tutorials for it and you go have at it. I bless you. I give you all of my prayers and well wishes to sew on velvet. Here's a close up shot of velvet. You can see how there are many fibers that are sticking up from it. The problem with these fibers are not only do they pick up lint like crazy, as you can see, but also, if you want to put right sides together, as is often the case in sewing, these fibers don't agree with each other. They definitely don't behave, and they're a little bit like a magnet when you put the two sides together and they just don't agree. And they tend to repel each other. So you're fighting with that fabric every step along the way. Now, there are tricks and ways of getting around that but I certainly wouldn't want you as a beginner to have to manage this kind of fabric. I'm just gonna say, you've been warned. Velvet is different than velour or stretch velvet. I would, these are stretch velvets and stretch velvet is not as hard as sewing on actual velvet. Stretch velvet is fine, um, but you treat it like a knit. And then there's velours that actually are usually in the home deck department that have a lot of body and substance. I would treat them more like a denim. If you take a close look at this velour, you can see that the fibers more closely resemble a tiny corduroy. They don't stick up like velvet and they definitely behave better. I'm thinking bulky is pretty explanatory. Anytime you have to put a lot of layers or really thick fabric through a machine, it's just gonna be much more difficult. Okay, let's talk about these furs. Is there anything more luxurious than a beautiful, soft fur? Oh, my heart just sings every time I see these things and I love fur. But fur is like for the pros. It's difficult to sew on fur. See this netting? Usually it's got this net backing, but that's a, it's really heavy loft. And that's a lot of bulk to stick through your machine. I mean, your presser foot is gonna be up high because it's, you know, the loft is quite high. And a loft that high means it's gonna be really bulky. Um, there's a lot of difficulty with sewing through fur. I would not pick this for a first project. No, not at all. I would say that would be a more expert thing to do. And I would definitely not use it for a backpack because if you're gonna do that, there's no way that the drawstring can really um, close properly in a casing with something like this just because it won't bunch up very well. There is actually a way to do it and because I'm such a show off, I'm gonna show you a drawstring backpack and how it's possible with the fur. See that? It's our old pal, the cotton print to the rescue again. I sewed a lining with a casing to the front of the fur backpack and that's how you get such a really fun result and the top still closes. There's a Lux bag for you. 
Now, not all furs are equal. This particular fur is more like a minky and it's quite thin. And the only problem with sewing on a something like this would be it would slip and slide a bit and the fur tends to get caught in your needle or it can not as difficult as something, especially something like that. <laughs> That's a lot to put through your machine. I'm gonna have to have some of this. Another thing that might keep you away from this fur though, is the price tag. These are regularly, you know, $40, $50 a yard and up. And let's talk about these like fake fur. I don't even know what these are called. Let's see what it's called. Faux shearling. Okay, these faux shearlings, they're really beautiful and so great. Oh, I'm like, it fell off just a minute. Oh, get back on. Okay, so these are really fantastic. I've sewn on these a lot. Oh, they're so soft. They're so soft and they're wonderful. But there's a ton of stretch to these, a lot of stretch. So whereas we were just talking about knit, you need to be thinking about these in terms of a knit as well. And um, pushing these through, along with the fact that they are, you know, have that loft. These are a little bit like sewing a fur crossed with a knit. Not the easiest choice, just saying. That being said, these are actually very forgiving fabrics and I find that things that I've sewn on them, even though maybe it sounds like it's like the most impossible fabric, it's very forgiving and you know, a lot of your seam sins are hidden within the loft of this fabric. And that can be sometimes true about fur as well. A lot of your sewing sins are hidden with the fabric like that. to another option that you could use for blankets that is great for beginning sewers and this is polar fleece and polar fleece is the most awesome stuff and it has revolutionized sewing for the beginning sewist part of the reason it is self sealing that means it won't fray that doesn't mean you won't want to finish your raw edges just for looks but you don't really have to because it's not going to fray so you never have to finish off those raw edges. You don't even need a serger. I mean, I think most professionals will use a serger when they're finishing off raw edges. But that's number one. And number two, it's just an absolute dream to sew on. It's really not that slippery. It doesn't, you know, tack to itself like a velvet. It's just fantastic stuff. I would think that any beginning sewer could sew on polar fleece. And if you want a better result, they've actually got a higher end called the Lux um, polar fleece and you'll be able to tell a difference. Let me see if I can find it for you. Okay, here we are at the Lux polar fleeces and this stuff, oh, it's just so buttery smooth and soft. This is really great polar fleece and you will definitely tell a difference in your end project if you're picking the good stuff. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but just, oh, it's great, great stuff and not that hard to sew on. Polar fleece is a bulky fabric, especially when compared to a quilting cotton, but it's bulky in a way that's not so bulky. It has an airy quality to it and it's not overly stretchy, so it's a pleasure to sew. Another thing that's really important to keep in mind when you come to the fabric store is where are you gonna hide in case that secret crush, arch nemesis, or that person you knew 10 years ago in high school happens to show up on this day and you are not anxious for a reunion when you're looking like you do when you go to the fabric store. Where are you gonna run? My recommendation is amidst the polar fleece. This would probably protect you from an earthquake as well. And make sure you're checking the back of these fabrics. Look at this one. On the front, it looks like your ordinary average flannel, right? Unassuming, not hard, but check out the back. It's a shearling on the back. Ha! That's really cool if you're gonna sew a jacket that you don't wanna to have to line and it already has that cool shirling lining on the inside of it. But it's definitely something that you wanna be thinking about when you're sewing because there's a lot of loft there that isn't on a typical 
everyday average flannel. These brocades are kind of cool, except they um, you can see that they're quite bulky. There's a lot of substance to this, like it's kind of thick. Okay, while I'm here, let's just go take a look at all of the cool home deck options there are. So all of these home deck fabrics are different and they have different requirements. I would be very careful. For a beginning sewist, I would stay away from this section for the most part. I mean, these vinyls are really cool. These I would mainly use for upholstery projects. They even have cork. Let's see if I can find this cork stuff. Maybe they've sold out of it. I don't know. But look, there's even like people sew on grass, like turf. <laughs> you can sew on that stuff. I would use an industrial machine. Really, you know, like it's a lot to sew on something like that. Ah, here it is. Cork. And this is amazing stuff. I can't wait to, I have been wanting to buy this and sew something out of it for the longest time. It's because I'm working on these videos that I can't work on a cool project out of cork. I don't think this would be terribly difficult to sew on, honestly. I think you could do this. I think this would be okay. I would probably use a denim needle or something with a little more stability if I were sewing on something this thick, though, for sure. And there might be a little stickiness to it, so don't take my word on it. I have not yet sewn on it, so I can't tell you the difficulties of that, but I think it's cool. Ah, and then there's this stuff. This is oil cloth. Oil cloth is the coolest stuff because it's got a coating on the top of it, so it's sort of waterproof. So it's like vinyl without being vinyl. If I use it for lunch boxes or, you know, makeup bags, anything that you wanna be able to wipe down or wipe clean. Okay, now we're coming to the thread, and we already talked in another video about this, but really you need quality thread. I would stay away from the cheapo thread. Just go with Coach and Clark or Guterman on this other side. Guterman's a great brand and I love sewing with Guterman thread. Just saying, it's awesome. Here we are, Guterman. And then there's tons of zippers, which you will have to do. It's not very far ahead, but yeah, this is not a beginning, beginning thing. We'll get there. The thing you're gonna be using quite a lot in sewing, even in the beginning stages, are Velcro. I like to buy it this way and not necessarily packaged, but you can buy it packaged. You definitely want the sew-in type and then also this elastic, which you're going to be using a ton. A lot of these things are going to come either in packages, as packaged varieties, or as by the yard. Um, and what I mean by that is like, take a look at this cording. This is not in a package. You have to go up to the cut counter and get this cording by the yard. This is cording. This is what you're gonna want for your next project. And also, by the way, this cording is small, and this is about what you'd want for a drawstring backpack. Let me show you some cording that is horrible for the next project. You do not want cording like this one right here. Check that out. Yeah, that is not for a drawstring bag. This is just way too huge for that, so you don't want that. But this is by the yard, and if you were gonna get some of this, then you would have to take it to the cut counter and ask them for, you know, however many yards that you needed. All kinds of cool trims and fun things that you can add to your projects. I love this section, and actually I love trim in general. One of my most favorite stores is in New York City. It's called M&J Trim. I could spend like days in that store. There's these things right here. These right here are, you know, webbings. And webbings are really great for backpack straps or anything like that. You look super professional when you use those. There's these fun little, you know, pom-pom borders that are cool to sew in. There's all of these like, hey, I wanna be like frozen and, and Norwegian, then you can do these little things. I don't know, there's beautiful lace that you can add to projects. Anyway, you really add a lot of personality when you're using these sorts of trims and I, love them so much look at that one that is so like victorian you could add that to the bottom of a dress and just immediate victorian flair and then the notions row and here's where we find all of the cool needles that i've been talking to you about and there are so many different 
shapes, sizes for every sort of project you can imagine. And I just noticed the other day that I have a back stock of needles like crazy. I had no idea how many needles I had, but I do, I am set, you know, until the next millennium with needles, but they're important and you need to make sure that you match the right needle for the right project. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. 116 needles are your heaviest duty needles. This is what you wanna choose when you're sewing upholstery, denim, bottom weights, corduroy, vinyl, canvas, velour, wool, or oil cloth or leather. 9014 needles are for medium weight fabrics like cotton, linen, knit, thin denims, thin home decor fabrics, polar fleece, and velvet. 8012 needles are for lightweight fabrics such as cotton, satin, linen, shirtings, flannel, and some knits. The 7010 needle is for featherweight fabrics, very light fabrics such as gauze, chiffon, tulle, organza, silk, wool, net, and lace. There are also specialty needles like these jeans and denim needles. I use these a lot for all kinds of fabrics that have the same heavy weight structure as a denim. Microtex needles are perfect for any fabric that is densely woven like a silk or perhaps a satin or a microfiber. These are really helpful needles for stretchy fabrics. These needles are especially for upholstery and home decor, and they come in different sizes depending on the weight of the fabric. And lastly, these are some needles for vinyl specifically, but I think there are also needles for leather. I just don't have any. When you finally decided all of the things that you need and your cart is full of all of your fabric that you want and notions and all of that stuff, and it's probably full of a lot of other stuff you don't need, like mine always is, then it's time to head to the cut counter. Don't get in a big long line only to get up to the cut counter realizing that you have to go all the way to the back because you didn't take a number. Yeah, it might have been a bad idea to come here. Oh, 70% off though. Look at these fabrics. I love that fur. So every once in a while as I'm passing these big bushes of floral leaf flowers, I think what would it be like to hide in those? and I've never tried it, but here I am. And then I realize, oh, there's buckets under there. It would be quite impossible to do. And there goes every little girl dream I ever had destroyed. I guess it's back to the polar fleece with me. I wonder how long I can hide out in here before I have to go home and fess up to all of the fabric I just bought. Well, here I am. I barely made it out of there alive. I mean, earthquakes and all. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that trip as much as I did.